Welcome to Wall Street News Briefing. The content of the briefing includes U.S. tech star CEO eyes Japan as Asia's hub for accelerating startups. Trump keeps New York empire intact as judge rescinds asset sale order. Why so many young Chinese adults are choosing to be full-time children? Is it even possible to do 28 A-levels and what's the cost? Is the Philippines becoming a U.S. proxy against Beijing in the South China Sea? U.S. tech star CEO eyes Japan as Asia's hub for accelerating startups. Nikkei Asia. U.S. startup investor Techstars is launching a three-month program in Tokyo for 12 selected startups, where they will receive business model and pitch mentorship and access to favorable rates on Amazon's cloud service. Techstars will also offer each startup a maximum of $120,000 in exchange for a 6% to 10% stake. Japan is an incredible market when it comes to tech startups, said CEO Mile Gavitt. Right now it's a market that punches under its weight. Trump keeps New York empire intact as judge rescinds asset sale order. Bloomberg. Former U.S. President Donald Trump was ordered to pay $354 million for lying about his wealth in a civil fraud case that concluded in September. However, the judge made no ruling on the dissolution of Trump's companies in New York and instead appointed two overseers to monitor the businesses. The decision means Trump can retain control of his New York empire for now but the judge could still call for restructuring and potential dissolution based on substantial evidence. Why so many young Chinese adults are choosing to be full-time children? South China Morning Post As youth unemployment in China reaches record highs, more young adults are opting to become full-time children and be paid by their parents to handle household tasks. This is seen as a temporary solution to the tough job market in China, which offers few opportunities, low wages, and long working hours. Some young people with employment offers have also chosen to work for their parents instead. Is it even possible to do 28 A-levels and what's the cost? BBC. A 17-year-old student in the UK who already has 34 GCSEs and an IQ of 161 has announced she is studying for 28 A-levels. The student, Manur Chima, said that she is studying 4 A-levels at school and the rest at home with her mother. According to the article, students usually study for 3 A-levels over two years. However, schools only put students through a maximum of four A-levels, as universities will not ask for more than that as an entry requirement. Is the Philippines becoming a U.S. proxy against Beijing in the South China Sea? South China Morning Post. Concerns are growing among some in the Philippines that closer military ties with the United States are turning the Southeast Asian nation into a proxy for American interests against China, as the two superpowers jostle for influence. Tens of thousands of Filipino and American troops took part in a series of joint drills last year and the exercises have continued into 2024, with the latest, a maritime cooperative activity in the South China Sea held on February 9, the third such training maneuver in four months. We are rehearsing, said Colonel Michael Logico, director of the Philippine Armed Forces Joint and Combined Training Center, referring to exercises aimed at boosting interoperability with U.S. forces and familiarizing Filipino soldiers with the latest weaponry. On a scale from 1 to 10, I would rate it at 11 if not 12, he told This Week in Asia, describing the strength of the Philippine-US alliance. However, not everyone agrees with drawing closer to the US, and they warn about the Philippines turning into a proxy for American interests. The president's own sister Ami, a senator, told ANC Digital earlier this month that China will always be our neighbor, we have no fight with them, let's not get dragged into a fight that's not our own. Ana Rosario Malandagoy, director of the pro-China Asian Century Philippines Strategic Studies Institute, wrote in the Manila Times on February 10 that agreements such as the EDCA, the VFA and the Mutual Defense Treaty have not only cemented the U.S. military presence and influence in the Philippines but also, most importantly, exemplified the Philippines' dependence on the U.S. in the military and defense sector. The U.S. has made it clear that in the event of an attack on Philippine forces, the Mutual Defense Treaty will be activated and Washington will come to Manila's aid. Asked if the Philippines could go it alone without its main ally, Logico said, we are trying to get there. Once we transition away from internal security, then we can focus all our capability for external defense. If you want things done fast, you do it alone. Trump's legal debts top a half billion dollars. Will he have to pay? Yahoo! Donald Trump's legal debts might now exceed a half billion dollars. A New York judge ordered Trump and his companies Friday to pay $355 million in fines, plus interest, after ruling that he had manipulated his net worth in financial statements. 
The stiff penalty comes just weeks after Trump was ordered to pay $83.3 million to the writer E. Jean Carroll for damaging her reputation after she accused him of sexual assault. A separate jury last year awarded Carroll $5 million from Trump for sexual abuse and defamation. Could Kyle Bradish's injury motivate the Orioles to call about Dylan Cease? Yahoo! The Baltimore Orioles may have been tempted to call the Chicago White Sox to ask about the availability of pitcher Dylan Cease, but the injury to Kyle Bradish has likely put a stop to that. Bradish, who was set to be part of a strong rotation in 2024, is set to miss the start of the season with a sprained ulnar collateral ligament, while it is also uncertain when John Means will be back. The Orioles still have some depth in their rotation and are unlikely to be willing to meet the hefty asking price for Cease, according to one general manager. Ukrainian man pleads guilty in cyber attack that temporarily disrupted major Vermont hospital. Associated Press. A Ukrainian man, Vyacheslav Igorevich Penchikov, has pleaded guilty to involvement in two separate malware schemes, including a cyber attack on the University of Vermont Medical Center in 2020. The attack temporarily shut down vital services and cost the medical center tens of millions of dollars. Penchikov pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to break U.S. anti-racketeering law and one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. He was accused of leading a racketeering enterprise and conspiracy that infected thousands of business computers with malicious software. He also led a conspiracy that infected computers with new malware, allowing ransomware access to infected computers. Penchikov faces up to 20 years in prison on each count. Nevada issues first license to a lounge in Las Vegas where cannabis can be consumed recreationally. Associated Press. Nevada has issued the first license for a recreational cannabis consumption lounge, with more expected to follow. The state's Cannabis Compliance Board granted the license to a Las Vegas lounge called Smoke and Mirrors, which is owned by Thrive Cannabis Marketplace. The company said it would open to the public in late February and offer cannabis-infused cocktails and showcase the work of artists and musicians. Proponents of the lounges said they would help boost the state's economy and attract tourists who visit Las Vegas but cannot legally use cannabis products in venues such as hotels. Super microcomputer stock plummeted today is this a chance to buy the explosive artificial intelligence, AI, growth stock? Yahoo! Super microcomputer stock had a significant drop on Friday, falling 20%. The stock had started the day on a positive note after OpenAI unveiled its new text-to-video AI software, Sora. However, Wells Fargo analyst Aaron Rakers assigned the company an equal weight rating and below its initial trading value of $1,045 per share. Rakers gave a one-year price target of $960 per share. Super Micro Computer stock ended the day at $803 per share, suggesting a potential upside of 19.6% over the next year. First BOE interest rate cut is months away despite recession, Pill says. Bloomberg. The Bank of England, BO, is still several months away from making its first interest rate cut, according to chief economist Hu Pill. Despite the UK economy falling into recession, Pill argued that there was not enough evidence to suggest that inflation will decline sustainably. The low growth capacity of the economy, which is a result of a tight labor market and poor productivity, means that weak activity is not putting significant downward pressure on inflation. Pill stated that the bow would need to be convinced that the persistent component of inflation is being squeezed out before considering a rate cut. Save Southeast Asia's mangrove forests or risk environmental devastation. South China Morning Post. Deforestation is threatening mangrove forests in Southeast Asia, according to a report from the Food and Agriculture Organization. In Indonesia and Thailand, mangrove forests have been degraded by aquaculture, while in Myanmar, rice, palm oil, and rubber plantations have led to the loss of mangroves. The destruction of mangrove forests has had a devastating impact on communities and wildlife, and has increased the risk of flooding for coastal villages. Rising sea levels and land subsidence are also exacerbating the problem. Urgent action is needed to protect mangrove forests in the region. How will Trump pay $354 million for real estate fraud? Your campaign donations, of course. Yahoo! Donald Trump needs to sell 8.75 million hats in a hurry after a court ruling that he must pay $354 million in penalties for years of financial fraud. The ruling stated that Trump and his two adult sons submitted blatantly false financial data to the accountants, resulting in fraudulent financial statements. The Trump Organization has said it will appeal. Amazon argues that National Labor Board is unconstitutional, joining SpaceX and Trader Joe's. Associated Press. Amazon has filed a legal brief arguing that the 88-year-old National Labor Relations Board, NLRB, is unconstitutional. 
The filing came in response to a case in which the NLRB alleges that the company unlawfully retaliated against workers at a New York City warehouse who voted to unionize. In its filing, Amazon argues that the structure of the NLRB violates the separation of powers and infringes on executive powers stipulated in the Constitution. Amazon's move follows similar legal arguments by Trader Joe's and SpaceX. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6Do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6Do Brief via email.